So how do you go about handling a conversion project? Let's spend the next 10 minutes or so trying to understand how a typical conversion project would look like. What are the phases? What are the technical activities and so on? Primarily, this follows the same SAP's Activate methodology. What you see on the screen is the transition to SAP S4 HANA roadmap and I've structured it as a matrix of project phases on the x-axis and work streams on the y-axis. Each cell will then represent an activity which needs to be executed in the project as part of a certain work stream and within a certain project phase. Simple enough. The work stream then helps us define the players of that phase. If we can effectively put the entire list of conversion activities into the right cell in this matrix, then the conversion is already well begun. So the, what, what are the work streams that we have? The project management, the application uh, solution adoption, the application design and configuration, analytics, custom code extensions, testing, application integration, system and data migration, technical architecture and infrastructure, and the transition to operations, because that's what you need once you have converted. Let's, let's just uh, mention the main activities in each of these work streams. In project management, primarily the common project and quality management tasks, organizational change management, and the enablement of the project team. The solution adoption. This primarily focuses on the training strategy and the learning paths, the enablement of the end users, so they are ready to use the new S4 HANA solution. Design and configuration. This is where your fit gap analysis happens, wherein you understand the existing ECC process and see how it can be adapted for the S4. For system conversions, the data volume management is a key activity in this phase. Moving on to analytics, uh, S4 HANA has the embedded analytics and you would already be using a different reporting strategy. So you would have to understand what are the analytics aspects that you currently have and how you can make use of the embedded analytics that's available in S4. Custom code extensions. This topic, I cannot uh, stress uh, enough on this. The existing custom code would need to be adjusted to function properly with S4 HANA. Primarily, the, stuff, uh, the steps involved are, we suggest the cleanup of the unused custom code, the identification of the affected custom code in the productive use, the plan and execution of the necessary adjustment, and leveraging the full power of HANA by optimizing the code. Also, trying to understand how you can use the S4 HANA key user extensibility tools and the SAP Cloud Platform for extensions for those functionality that you want to customize S4 HANA for. The testing uh, work stream, this covers identifying the test scenarios, the test cases, the planning of the tests, the execution uh, of all the tests, including the integration, regression, and the user acceptance. From our experience, we suggest that you run extensive performance tests on the production hardware with full load and the on the final setup of the production hardware. Because you don't want to be in for surprises when you do your ramp up and you realize that the production hardware is sinking. The integration work stream. This includes all the activities that ensure that the new S4 HANA system is properly integrated to all the customer solutions. It could be SAP, non-SAP products, cloud solutions, and so on. Anything in the landscape that earlier ECC was connecting to. The system and data migration. This is planning and the setup of all the S4 HANA system as copies of prod, because that's where you're going to do all your mock conversions, your development conversion, and your quality conversions. And also, and also setting up the uh, identifying the data migration activities because data migration is a huge step post uh, running the sum tool for the conversion. From our experience on S4 conversion, we suggest that all open development is saved and the development is overwritten with a copy of production. Some customers think twice about doing it, but from our experience, we understand that when you do this, you accomplish two things. One is post go, post S4 you have your development and ECC, uh, development and quality system as close to uh, your production as possible. And the second one being each of these mock runs will help you zero in on the downtime and also identify all the problems that you could possibly foresee in production. Because like I said, a conversion, most of the errors are not the technical errors. They are data driven errors. And if you have run this conversion on copies of prod, you can rest assured that you've 
uh, you've uh, successfully fixed most of the errors before you touch the production. So the only delta that would be would be all the data that transaction data that has gone into the production system since your last mock run. The technical architecture and infrastructure. This is primarily setting up the, uh, your data center if you're doing an on-premise and then setting up all the processes around that. And you may also consider connectivity to the SAP cloud platform at this stage. If, if you're installer, if you're uh, hosting it on AWS, Azure, HEC, KCloud, GCP, or anything else, then you would also ensure that you get connected to that data center as well. Transition to operations. This is primarily post go live how the project team is going to hand off all these um, all this knowledge to the operations team putting the tools putting the knowledge database in place uh, before you go live so that covers the activities along the work streams now let's look at the x-axis this is primarily the activate methodology so what happens in each of these phases the discover phase or the assess phase as we call it is primarily to build a business case and get an approval to start the project. So the business, uh, the discover phase happens possibly a couple of months or even a quarter before you would actually start the project. And the more you invest on the discovery or the, or the assess phase, it will ensure that you have a much smoother conversion project. This will help you evaluate the complexity of the conversion and its feasibility as well. So what are the activities that you would typically perform here? Uh, along with your partner or your service provider, you sit and understand the overall strategy for this dis digital transformation. A high-level roadmap, a three-year or a five-year roadmap that tells you once you've gone to S4, what are the various innovations that you're going to do? How are you going to use the power of S4? Solution mapping. Primarily, solution mapping means the high-level areas of the existing solution landscape that can benefit from a move to S4 and then exploring the use of extensions that can be done on S4, and then evaluation on, of the impact of the technical architecture and the IT infrastructure. Because most customers, when they embark on this S4 journey, they're still not on a HANA platform. So you would need to understand that a hardware refresh would, would be required at this stage as well. And one other main deliverable that is given as part of the assessment uh, phase is a conversion L1 project and the resources required, both the resources from the uh, service provider as well as from the customer, because we'll have to work hand in hand with the customer to ensure a successful journey. This phase could ideally be performed by service providers who have done multiple S4 conversions as they understand the pain points and have tools and accelerators to perform the above set of activities. Uh, we have our tool K-Turn, which, which does a comprehensive discover assess uh, plan and the output that we derive from this uh, analysis will help you take a business case for approval. Given the importance of this phase, we also recommend that you run certain pre-checks on a copy of production in your sandbox. And this will help you zero in on a more realistic timeline and resources required from the business and the IT during the conversion. Because this for conversion, it being a completely data-driven, functional-driven project, the more bottle, uh, the more uh, bottlenecks and the hurdles that you receive, that you remove upfront, will make the journey a lot smoother. So the prepare. So what do you do during the prepare phase? So this is the actual start of your S4 conversion. So here you have an L2 project uh, project plan, and you have all the strategies for the uh, UI, for the infrastructure, the testing, the reporting, the cutover, governance. Everything is finalized in this phase. During the explore phase. You have a detailed design of the S4 solution. You run the FitGap workshops with your IT SMEs who understand the current ECC, uh, current ECC processes. You've done the custom code analysis with respect to S4. And then a technical design of the 2B solution is designed and documented. And a conversion on a copy of production is done during this phase. So this is going to help you remove all the bottlenecks and also be able to train the IT users. So by the end of the explore phase, all technical and functional aspects of the conversion are fully planned. Moving on to the realize phase. This is where you prepare the technical architecture and infrastructure and set them up for the S4 HANA conversion. And then you start running the conversion on copies of prod or, or for the development, QA and multiple mock runs. What you analyzed on the custom code, the actual adjustment happens here. 
some customers prefer to do this because um, some uh, some customers prefer to do this custom code adjustment in the sandbox itself what is the advantage of doing this custom code adjustment in the sandbox number one you're able to start this work early on and then you can use uh, capture them in transports and move them into the development and change the ownership of these objects so you save a lot of time by doing this ahead in the sandbox rather than in the development finally end user training including project specific training material is also prepared here during the deploy or the prepare to go live phase we finalize the readiness of the s4 hana and the business process for production go live final testing rehearsing the cutover during multiple mock runs and finalizing the it infrastructure operations also the conversion of the production instance the knowledge transfer and hand off between the project's team and the support team it is very crucial that you hold on to the project team of your service provider or the or your partner who has done the conversion with you during the uh, post go live at least for a month or two so that you've done you you're able to do successful month end closes be able to address the problems because many of the problems that you would see post go live your the the implementation the conversion partner would have already seen it and he has a fairly good understanding so what do you do in the run phase this is the post go live phase here you start optimizing the operability of the s4 hana and the new S sap system is continuously updated making the latest innovations from sap available to the business and then this innovation cycle starts again so this kind of gives you the various activities that are performed in each of the phases under each of the works teams